Again, I'm Captain David Borsma. I'm responsible for the Police Department's Bureau of Services. And what I'd like to do is just provide a brief overview of automated license plate readers for those of you that don't uh, are necessarily sure what the technology is all about. Um, basically, from our perspective, I'm sure you're going to see some different viewpoints up here. I prepared just a very brief PowerPoint presentation that will hopefully uh, answer some of the questions that you may have. So essentially we're going to have an overview of ALPR and we're going to talk a little bit about the draft policy that uh, some of you have a copy of. In this PowerPoint slide you can actually see what a typical ALPR um, camera would look like when it's attached to the light bar of a police vehicle. I was hoping to show a very uh, brief video as part of this, but it looks like there's a different version of PowerPoint on this computer, so I'm going to access it from a different way. This video, um, yes? Can you dim the lights a little bit? Yeah, possibly. Yes. You're assuming I know how to do this? The reason I'm using this video, and it's, it's kind of a cartoon and it's got some humor in it, but it, it very succinctly uh, discusses ALPRs and what they do and don't do in a way that I probably couldn't do. Um, and it's done in a way that's very easy to understand. I apologize in advance if any of you uh, think that I'm kind of dumbing things down. That's not the intent. It's really just to kind of get everybody on the same page and then I'll clarify any other points that were made in the video. It takes a little less than two minutes to watch. <laughs> All right, class, open your books to page one of License Plate Recognition 101. Let's learn the facts about LPR. LPR means license plate recognition. It's a technology currently being used by law enforcement across the country. Here's law enforcement today without LPR. Here's life with LPR. What information is collected by an LPR system? LPR collects your medical records, your social security number, your mother's bank account, the address of your high school sweetheart. Not exactly. Here's how it really works. LPR technology only scans license plates. There's no personal information. LPR has multiple legal precedents already upholding the legality of its use and the fact that it does not violate an individual's privacy. So how is collected historical LPR data used? Well, some people think it's used like this. <laughs> some people want you to think that it's being used to track innocent civilians like the Smithsons enjoying a nice day in the park. No, I don't think so. Here's how it works. LPR has been used to solve literally hundreds of thousands of crimes across the country. It is historical data that helps an investigator, with a permissible purpose, to piece together the puzzle, thanks to many dedicated men and women in uniform. Sometimes these puzzles bring a child home safely to the parents. Foil a terrorist plot, identify a murderer before they strike again, or bring up a narcotics operation before the drugs hit the street. Now, let's review. Does LPR invade your privacy? No. But it does save lives. <laughs> All right, again, I apologize if some of you think that was an over oversimplification, but I think it hits on a lot of the points that, uh, that we think are valid from the police department's viewpoint. So what is being recorded? This is an example of what I'm trying to do. <laughs> this is an example of the type of information that would be recorded by an ALPR camera. Uh, it's going to take a picture of the license plate and the vehicle that the license plate is attached to. It records the license plate number. Uh, it also records the date, the time, and the GPS coordinate, coordinates of where the vehicle was located at, at the time the picture was taken. So. Uh, I know some of, some people are concerned about whether or not there's any images of occupants of vehicles or uh, anyone around a vehicle. And 
to answer that, it could happen. That's not the intent of the camera, but it really is dependent upon distance uh, from the vehicle, uh, the angle at which the picture is taken, and certainly if they're, for example, in the picture on the right-hand side, if somebody had been standing just adjacent to that vehicle, there certainly <laughs> could be a picture of a person uh, captured by the AOPR camera. What it doesn't do, however, is it doesn't um, record any information regarding the registered owner of the vehicle. There is no, it's just the plate number itself. And the only time that um, law enforcement would go into a database that we collect on license plates would be if we had a legitimate law enforcement purpose, such as investigating a crime, looking for a missing person, something along those, those lines. So if there was never any reason to look at that particular license plate, the police would never see the picture of the person next to the car. And there's, again, there's no way to connect an individual to the license plate except by going through another uh, uh, data point, such as the DMV files. So why, why does the police department want to use uh, ALPR? There's a number of reasons. First of all, about 70% of all crimes involve the use of a vehicle, whether that's the taking of a vehicle, a vehicle being used by the perpetrators of the crime, a vehicle being used as a getaway, and this information comes from the uh, uh, International Association of Police Chiefs. Uh, Essentially, ALPR provides for a rapid scanning and real-time comparison with hot lists, again, such as uh, stolen vehicle uh, system lists, uh, National uh, Crime Information Center uh, wanted persons, uh, terrorism watch lists, uh, things of that nature. Again, it's, it's real-time comparison as an officer is driving in his or her vehicle that passes a license plate uh, that um, alerts the officer to one of those uh, that I just mentioned, they'll know about it. There'll be an alarm that'll signal, and then it'll be up to the officer to verify that the information is correct, and they have to take further investigative steps before they take any action. We consider ALPR to be essentially a force multiplier. It doesn't allow us to do anything more than what we currently are allowed to do legally. It just allows us to do it in a much more efficient and rapid manner. And a police officer can drive down a public street, uh, your neighborhood or uh, business district and record license plate numbers that are seen in public. There, there is no expectation of privacy in public and your license plate number is not um, confidential information. Uh, another aspect of ALPR it is the historical data that it captures and we consider that to be a very uh, important investigative tool. Uh, we may not realize at the time that a uh, license plate number is captured that uh, it may have been involved in a crime or may be involved in a future crime, but that data could be useful in the future uh, when we're doing a, some kind of a criminal investigation. ALPR does not identify individuals, and I can't stress that enough. It only takes pictures of and records license plates. It does not include personal identifying information or PII and there is no expectation of privacy when you're in a public place. You can be, as an individual, can be filmed in a public place. The police can film you, you can film the police. There's nothing illegal about that. Um, it doesn't track anyone and it certainly doesn't track innocent individuals. Tr tracking would be something that we would consider with the use of a GPS tracking device that requires a search warrant and obviously probable cause. That's not what this is. It simply takes a snapshot of your license plate on your vehicle at a specific time at a specific place. You've had a chance hopefully to look at our uh, APD policy and I'd like to just briefly talk about the policy that we have and it is relatively brief um, but it is considered to be uh, the best practices in law enforcement. We subscribe to a, uh, a company that is called Lexapol, and they do uh, police department policies across the U.S. And essentially their policies uh, fall into a number, three different guidelines. They're either the best practice, or they're a federal law, or they're a state law. And we update them every six months, so twice a year. And the draft policy that we've put out is essentially what their recommended policy is for the state of California. Uh, now we do have some leeway. We can make some adjustments to that and that's why we're here to listen to what everyone here has to say. And we can certainly, as long as it doesn't um, 
violate any federal law or state law, we can certainly you know, make some adjustments to the policy. Um, the policy does call for the access being restricted to official and legitimate law enforcement business. Um, we will have some kind of a login and uh, password protected system. Um, we are limiting the retention of the data to one year, which is the same as the NICRIC policy, which I'm sure Brian will talk about in a little bit. Uh, now you might ask, well, why would you keep it for a year? Again, that goes back to um, the historical data being useful for future criminal investigations. Now, personally, I'd love to have the data forever um, because you never know what might happen. And I understand that data retention is, is part of what people are concerned about. And so we feel that the policy of keeping it for one year is a very good compromise, and that's NICRIC's policy, and we think it's a good one. So. That's why we're going to stick with that as well. Uh, we'll we're going to require training for all officers that are seeking access to the database, and we will conduct regular system audits of the database to make sure that it's being used properly at all times. Um, there are a number of success stories that I could go into uh, in more detail. I'm going to try to limit this to the five minutes that uh, Alex talked about. I will tell you about just one success story that's very recent. Uh, this past Friday, the uh, San Leandro Police Department received a wanted persons bulletin that the Alameda Police Department had sent out uh, in relation to a series of commercial burglaries that had occurred in our city. It was a, sp a string of three of them. Uh, it was a subject that was known to the San Leandro Police Department. They had a vehicle that they knew was attached to that individual, and so they entered that license plate number into their ALPR hot list. They then went and searched areas of their city and the neighboring city of Oakland where their border was to locations where that person was known to frequent and sure enough they got hit with their ALPR uh, onboard computer and were able to subsequently take the person into custody. And that's just as recent as, as this last Friday. So with that, um, I'll turn it over to the next speaker. Thank you.